Welcome and thank you for being here. This podcast invites you to journey through conversations which share the fascination of the physical matter we inhabit, the breathing body. These conversations explore its inherent intelligence, movements and healing. I'm talking to people from various fields of research and practice, such as osteopathy, dance, somatic practices, anatomy, embryology, spirituality, and many more. Would you like to learn about our miraculous body and be inspired in many new ways? Then this podcast is for you. My name is Florina and I'm the host of this podcast. I'm an osteopath with a background in dance and yoga and based in London where I practice, lecture and research. I hope you enjoy these episodes and I'm looking forward to hear from you. Hello again and welcome on the podcast, Kathy. It's wonderful that you are here. I'm honored to be invited, Florina. And you are joining us from New York City, right? Yes. Tell me, how are you? Have you been in practice today working with clients? Uh, no, I just did some paperwork today. Today's been a paperwork day. I am slowly starting to retire from seeing clients very slowly. Ah. I'm still seeing clients, but not many, many mm -hmm. a day anymore. Mm -hmm. And uh, put more effort into writing and mm. uh, lecturing. Which is amazing. I've been reading in your book again today, <laughs> which is highly informing my practice as an osteopath. Um, and maybe, maybe we start there, Kathy. Wouldn't you mind to just tell the listeners a little bit, you are a lactation consultant. That's what you're trained in. And for the days when you are in practice, what's, what does that mean? What do you, what do you do as an international board certified lactation consultant? What does your work entail? Yes. Well, I, I see parents and their, their newborn or not so newborn baby for breastfeeding problems. I specialize in families that have some medical pro problem. Either baby's got tight muscles from their position in utero or they have a heart defect or Down syndrome or a tongue tie. Those are the things I really like to work with or if mom has a medical problem. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you help them to, yeah, to, to make it possible to breastfeed, which is, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, and some babies are so sick that yeah. we find other ways to help them mm -hmm. feed and get as much of mom's milk as they possibly mm -hmm. can. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole mixed bag. But basically, we want to encourage as much human milk mm -hmm. and as much direct mm -hmm. breastfeeding as possible because there are so many magical things about mm -hmm. breastfeeding that are good for, for mm -hmm. parents and babies. And... Mm -hmm. um, also, we want to promote attachment in the family. Mm -hmm. Breastfeeding isn't a guarantee that there'll be good emotional health and good attachment, but it helps a lot. Mm -hmm. I love that you already used the word magic because, as you know, that's exactly what I would like to dive in deeper today. And really, that's what I wish to share with today's episodes with the world, how how magic what a miracle breastfeeding is. But maybe before we go there, I've read, I know that you are a lactation consultant since 1992. And I was, when I researched your background, I was wondering what were the experiences or visions or desires or inspirations? What was it which what suddenly made you decide that's the route, which in a way is a very unique niche. Not everyone is a specialist in breastfeeding. What was it what really oh, took your fire and led you down that route so intensely? Yeah, it's especially back then, there weren't very many lactation consultants mm. who were board certified. The board was fairly new. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it, it was definitely a new career when I certified. There were two things. First, I love 
biology and learning about the body. And it, it's very incredible how we work. And that oh, I'm yes. so excited <laughs> to be here because I know that that's what you're all about, just how incredible mm-hmm. the human body is. Mm-hmm. So I had the background education that made this really possible. And secondly, my son was a challenge, my firstborn. He was a challenge. I I say he made me a lactation consultant because I had to learn (laughs) a lot to successfully nurse him. He had a tongue tie and some musculoskeletal issues and on and on and on. So there were things going on that um, I needed to really learn a lot and work hard to breastfeed him. But I found it so rewarding to watch this little boy grow just from my body. And, you know, we tend to believe that we're capable of growing a human being in our body. But once they're born, a lot of us worry that we can't keep feeding them with our body. So that was that was really awesome for me. Mm. So I started to teach childbirth classes Mm. and the clients that I was teaching needed a lot more help with breastfeeding than Mm -hmm. with the birth. So I wound up learning more and more and more to help my my childbirth class participants and uh, became a La Leche League leader because I had really learned a lot from La Leche League, gotten a lot of support, gotten a lot of assistance, and I wanted to pay it back. And then that was a huge learning curve. I continued to learn a lot as a leader. And when a friend of mine decided she was going to take the uh, Ibelsey exam, our lactation consultant boards, I was like, oh, what a good idea. So I started to collect my continuing education hours and make some money so I could afford to pay the exam fee. And I took Mm -hmm. it. Wow. It's really inspiring. No, not in touching the story which you tell about your own son. And when you shared how you actually were fascinated how, because I'm so fascinated how exactly how we can grow a human body. <laughs> Embryology is my, and my other big passion. I think it's just miraculous how this baby grows. And I agree then the baby's there and it is fascinating and miraculous how the baby keeps thriving. And I mean, a healthy baby, which is purely breastfed, they have such healthy, chubby cheeks and legs, and it's all from the milk. And the milk is obviously more than just the fat, which we can, (laughs) which we see under the skin. Um, Maybe that is a lovely lead into, yeah, the topic we want to explore tonight in much more depth. What are all these literally miracles which reveal themselves through breastfeeding and we were in the email exchange we had, we, I was sharing how I find the, the baby's born and we can place the baby on mom's belly and the baby would just, when I learned that the baby would just crawl up to the breast and start feeding because it knows it has all this inherent intelligence. And I would love to hear more about that. Yeah. How so can that happen? They think that some of the sensory experiences babies have during birth prepare them to breastfeed. And we know that babies who are born by cesarean have more difficulty. They lose more weight. They are less likely to be exclusively breastfed. Some of that is because there's more separation. But even when we give really good care, they still can have more difficulty. So there's something about the process of birth that gets the child ready. And then there are all of these sensory cues. The area around the nipple, the areola where the baby should really put their mouth, that's Mm -hmm. warmer than the rest of mom's body. So that temperature differential, baby's hands and feet are chilly because of their circulation isn't as robust when they're newly born. So that increases the difference between the breast, which is warm, and the baby's cool hands. So the baby seeks Mm -hmm. out that warmth. There's also the little Montgomery glands or areola glands. They look like little pimples on the Mm -hmm. outside of the areola. Those make a smell 
they they mm -hmm. help lubricate the breast and keep the nipple um, able to stretch nicely, keep the mm -hmm. skin healthy, kill some germs. But it also has a very distinctive smell mm -hmm. that is similar to the smells baby gets inside the mom and that draws the baby as well. So mm -hmm. we've got heat for touch senses. We've mm -hmm. got a specific smell that draws the baby mm -hmm. to the breast. And then baby's reflexes are turned on by touch sensation. So baby will rub their face on mom, mm -hmm. rub their cheeks. That's called mm -hmm. scanning. And the baby is mm -hmm. feeling for those, that temperature change, that area where he's supposed to grab. He buries his little chin in the mm -hmm. breast and that lets the nipple brush against that cute little dent right above the, the mm -hmm. upper lip under the nose. That's called mm -hmm. the philtrum. And when baby gets touched the philtrum, he tilts his head back, opens his mouth wide, brings his tongue forward, and then he's a, he feels the breast and he grabs it. So there's all of these cues that tell the baby, mm -hmm. here's where the breast is. Mm -hmm. Wow. And... Am I right to think that actually the baby, because so often, I guess we feel, oh, I need to help or I need to do it, but actually, no, we just need to let, na in that moment and the baby's born, we just need to give nature the space to do its thing. Absolutely. And not interfere. So pushing mm -hmm. the baby's head on the breast can cause them to mm -hmm. pull their tongue back. There's some very old research on that. Um, and also pulling on the baby's hands or swaddling them down, mm -hmm. that can cause the baby confusion too. One of the important things they do before they bring their face to the breast is they bring their hands to the nipple and they play with the nipple area. And that makes the nipple stick out more, makes mm -hmm. it more prominent for the baby. And from about six weeks mm -hmm. of development in utero, the fetus brings their little hand to their face wow. before they swallow amniotic fluid. And as they get more and more mature, the hand comes to their mouth. So the so hand to mouth movements and mouth to hand movements, which help the mm -hmm. baby find the breast when their hands are on the breast, mm -hmm. are another thing that helps the baby. And when we put mittens mm -hmm. on them or we turn their t-shirt down mm -hmm. over their mm -hmm. hands or we hold their arms down or mm -hmm. pull them away we frustrate them mm -hmm. wow i didn't know about the the hands to mouth that's fascinating and in utero the baby would do that also as a preparation yes yes that is wow. built in it's a very strong mm -hmm. neurological connection mm -hmm. so babies actually whilst they are in utero are so much more sensing being than we probably think or than I often think they yeah are. Their, their behaviors are very complex mm -hmm. wow and what happens that makes me think Kathy if what happens if that doesn't take place or if for some reason the baby can't be on the warm skin of mom how how does that feel for a baby I mean we don't know yeah yeah <laughs> um we have some clues from um, mm -hmm. Dr. Nils Bergman's research mm -hmm. that when babies are separated from their mom, they're stressed. Their nervous system is both activated and inactivated. So we have two basic parts to our nervous system, our autonomic nervous system, the part that runs our unconscious body processes. So the sympathetic arm is the fight or flight um, you know, let's, let's get moving and, and take care of this. Let's get away. And the parasympathetic, the rest, I just make friends, make love. And, and those usually work in tandem. We get the right balance between those two parts of our nervous system for what we're supposed to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. Like if you've ever gone to sleep and you're worried about something and you just can't fall asleep because your brain is going, going, you're stuck in mm -hmm. too much sympathetic activation mm -hmm. to fall asleep. Or if you're trying to, you know, you, you, somebody's yelling at you while you're trying to eat and your stomach 
is unhappy because your parasympathetic tone is being ruined by this threat of somebody yelling mm -hmm. at you. So babies tend to enter a, a state when they're separated from their mom for, you know, and their cries aren't answered. They tend to get high sympathetic tone mm -hmm. and high parasympathetic tone. And that puts them into this kind of freeze, very stressed, mm -hmm. but very frozen mm -hmm. state. Mm -hmm. So really it's not a good thing for babies, mm -hmm. little tiny babies to be alone. They learn mm -hmm. over time that they're safe and they're okay to lay down mm -hmm. a little bit and that their parents are there, mm -hmm. but newborns really need to be cuddled by someone. And if mom mm -hmm. is sick, dad or grandma mm -hmm. or, you know, the mm -hmm. nurse, somebody else can cuddle the baby and help mm -hmm. the baby feel safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we might go deeper into that, all the benefits which there are for breastfeeding. And one of the, do I hit a correct, one of the actually, the, the base things which we need for breastfeeding is that the baby is obviously calm and feels safe. Yeah. And in your book, I'm not sure which author, which chapter it is, but maybe it is Neil's chapter when he writes about these components of skin to skin, the mother smell, the connection and the relationship, this mother baby diet, which is so utterly important. Would you mind? talk a little bit more about that. And I think he also goes on to talk about how it is important for the future, which I'm not sure how many people are aware that actually in these first weeks of breastfeeding, we lay down the garden, the, 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 the soil for the child to grow. Yeah, yeah. The, the nervous system, you know, when, when we're born as human beings, our brain is fairly immature. And it has many, many more nerve cells or neurons than it needs. Mm -hmm. And whichever ones are used will wire together and live. The ones that aren't used will die and get mm -hmm. eaten away by the, the immune system. They'll get broken down into, mm -hmm. you know, their constituent molecules and become food for the body. And this is a really important process, that pruning and wiring. Too many and messages get lost. So we need the right amount and we need them connected up in ways that are going to be helpful for the baby's future life. So mm -hmm. breastfeeding tends to wire the parts of the brain that are involved in executive functioning. That's the ability to do what you need to do day to day to day to meet your goals, even if the goal is mm -hmm. far away. Mm -hmm. And this is the most important component of success in life. IQ doesn't define your success. You can be very bright and have no executive functioning and you just don't do well in school. Wow. You don't mm -hmm. do your homework. You don't finish your, mm -hmm. you know, what you need mm -hmm. to do. So this executive functioning is mm -hmm. built in mm -hmm. to sensitive mm -hmm. parenting, to that skin to skin and breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a really cool thing. Wow. Maybe that goes into mu too much detail, but w w why is that? Is that because, maybe that's super scientific, because some ingredients from the breast milk, literally, they really facilitate, oh, they just facilitate, obviously, the maturation of the nervous system. Or to put it simple. Well, they do. The, the special sugar in human milk, mm -hmm. lactose, mm -hmm. it gets broken down into two parts. Lactose mm -hmm. breaks down into energy and galactose mm -hmm. becomes part of the very substance of the brain and helps mm -hmm. the brain to mature and mm -hmm. grow. Wow. So it would it be over-exaggerated if one would say, actually, healthy breastfeeding really supports the child to grow to that strong centered personality. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And there's research on that. Kids are less mm -hmm. likely to be um, in trouble in school, like mm -hmm. especially external externalizing behaviors, they're called. Mm -hmm. So um, being mean to other people, hurting other people, um, uh, being a bully, they're less likely to be to have those behavior problems if they're breastfed. They still might 
um, suffer from depression and other internalizing problems, but they're less likely to have externalizing problems mm -hmm. as children and, and adolescents. Mm -hmm. Wow. And you mentioned very in the beginning that when I asked you what fascinated you and you mentioned the word attaching. And of course, if we have skin to skin and breastfeed on one level, we get the breast milk, but then there is this whole other component And I wonder how does that support the child just as an on top extra? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, that that connection, that being skin to skin with your parent, with someone who loves you is mm -hmm. vital. The baby, the baby's heart rate is different. It's safer mm -hmm. if they're being cuddled by someone who loves them. They breathe better if they're being cuddled by someone who loves them, there's all these, Nils calls them hidden regulators that happen mm. when baby is being cuddled by someone who really loves them. And it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a biological parent. Like co-moms wow. can have the same effect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Baby mm -hmm. can be a, a result of a, a donor mm -hmm. egg or donor sperm mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. parent who loves them mm -hmm. can still have that effect mm -hmm. on the baby. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, there's some biology involved because parents' brains remodel during pregnancy. The, the mother's brain remodels a lot, but her partner, their brain remodels too to have more social discrimination so they can decide who's safe to be around their baby. Wow. So is that, I didn't, I didn't, wow, I didn't, I just want to say, tell more about how does mom's brain remodel? Is that exactly how it does it? Mom that, intuitively feels. That's for feels... dad or the part or co-mom or the partner. Mom's brain remodels to make mm -hmm. the baby more rewarding. Mm -hmm. So they think, you think about your baby. I mean, my kids are in their mid thirties mm -hmm. and I think about them and I just smile. It's like, oh, my kids, wow. um, when they're mm -hmm. here, when they visit, my heart is so full and, mm -hmm. you know, they're just so rewarding. And I didn't find babies and kids that rewarding before I before. got pregnant. Wow. I, I like them, but not like, mm -hmm. not like I do now. So uh, mom's brain also remodels to have more patience and to get less mm -hmm. freaked out when babies cry. And that happens mm -hmm. to different degrees and in different individuals. But mm -hmm. one of the things that scientists think triggers child abuse is when the parent thinks, oh, the baby's manipulating me when they cry or mm -hmm. when they get mm -hmm. very, when the parent feels very unsafe mm -hmm. when the baby cries mm -hmm. and that makes them less likely to care for the baby. So mm -hmm. this brain development that causes you to, be calmer when your baby cries, still want to help them to mm -hmm. have empathy for mm -hmm. them. And then the third big change is that the theory of mind, um, we get better at figuring out how other people are feeling from their facial expressions and their nonverbal communications, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. babies communicate without words at first. Mm -hmm. Wow. There was just something and now it just left my mind wow that's so uh, that's so fascinating ah exactly whilst you talked i was thinking that's so beautiful so actually breastfeeding pregnancy delivery it doesn't just invite us to trust the baby's intuition but also our own intuition knowing that maybe we might even as mom or as dad actually get closer to these very deep instincts and then trust if we feel this person is safe for this person. I don't want to give my baby because it's the wisdom yeah. of our body revealing itself. That's so yes. beautiful, Kathy. Yes, exactly. It's, it's so exciting mm -hmm. to, to learn all of these mm -hmm. really cool things. Yeah. And that what that, I mean, that is what birth and what breastfeeding does. It's nature and it brings us closer to nature. And that makes me ask and I think, wow, what, of course, I'm sure you are aware that, um, we, people are breastfeeding, but many people are also not breastfeeding or give up very quickly or just just take it for normal granted that they use the bottle. How do you overcome these challenges when you meet parents or mothers who, you know, there is actually no medical reason why they shouldn't, but 
they think it's easy or they how do you overcome these these challenges knowing how many thousand benefits it brings i find that sometimes difficult yeah no it it is difficult because my heart breaks for people who have so many social challenges that they can't make breastfeeding work and what it comes down to is we were never meant to do this alone we were meant to have the support of a society that would help feed us, help mm -hmm. do laundry for us, help take care of our older children mm -hmm. so that we could have this time to establish breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here in the U.S., uh, maternity leave is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Many moms will have six weeks of disability. They'll get partial pay. Mm -hmm. And others will not get any pay at all or any mm -hmm. time off. So this is a real difficult thing. Our society mm -hmm. does not put resources into supporting young families. Other places mm -hmm. in the world, there's tremendous support for young families. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I was thinking, I often think about what is... What is the role of each individual of us? What is the role of our society or what is each of us responsibility to facilitate breastfeeding? And probably it's exactly what you say. It's maybe sometimes actually less about the baby, but in first place care for mom or care around all the circumstances around that mom can just be and breastfeed. Yeah. Yeah. And recover. You know, mm -hmm. there's this huge wound inside your uterus where that placenta was. And you really need mm -hmm. time to recover. Your your joints become lax during pregnancy. They relax mm -hmm. so that your belly can expand and your mm -hmm. distribution of weight can change. So many things happen mm -hmm. during pregnancy. And then they slowly change postpartum. And mm -hmm. you need rest for this to happen. And you need protection mm -hmm. against stress, too. It's stressful mm -hmm. becoming a new family for the first time. And, you know, you're mm -hmm. concerned, am I doing this right? Mm -hmm. um, oh, my goodness, it's four o'clock in the afternoon and I haven't showered yet today. It, mm -hmm. It's a really difficult thing. So having someone who can come and clean your bathroom and do some laundry mm -hmm. for you, bring a meal. Mm -hmm. I mean, those are huge gifts. Um, mm -hmm. I usually discourage people from letting people in the house who just want to hold the baby you know, mm -hmm. let people come who will clean your bathroom. <laughs> That's so great. Yeah. Yeah. In the UK, there are this program when you, where you can order amazing organically cooked food and then it's delivered as a present for the yes. just moms. I think it's so amazing. <laughs> That's the one gift to, to give them. It's a, a new wonderful mom. gift. Mm -hmm. So next to, so if a mom comes and she struggles breastfeeding in season prior practice, yes, of course you look at all, are there any technical details we need to look at if the mom but also that would be a big part of the advice you would give or more encouragement to is that correct you as a lactation consultant you look at obviously the whole family unit it's not just the baby issue absolutely and i'm i'm always thrilled if mm -hmm. dad or co-mom grandma whoever whoever's there to include them mm -hmm. because um dads and female partners too want to solve problems that's part of mm -hmm. the partner role the co-parent mm -hmm. role they want to solve problems so if you can give them specific things that they can do to help hold the baby's feet you know let the baby rest mm -hmm. the soles of their feet in your hand if they're flailing so they feel mm -hmm. secure mm -hmm. talk to the baby soothingly if the mm -hmm. baby's a little frustrated carry the baby a little bit there are mm -hmm. many things that partners can do and this helps them feel safer and more secure and like they're contributing and mm -hmm. like they're important sometimes dads feel very left out mm -hmm. when mom's breastfeeding so mm -hmm. letting them see how important they are and how their role mm -hmm. is different, but still very important to the baby's future health mm -hmm. and mental health is. Mm. And, and how do you deal with the challenge? I'm now thinking, I'm sure there must also be situations where it's maybe actually you yeah, medically not possible to breastfeed. Yes. Um, how do you then support moms that they still can give 
the most they can to the baby or also how if maybe there are listeners who were not able to breastfeed the baby and one could also fall into deep fear and worries wow I but I'm sure there must be also other yeah how do you deal with that challenge yeah. grief of mom not being able to or medical reasons yeah yeah what one of the important things is emotional support like really mm. to empathize with however the mom is feeling often they're feeling very sad and mourning and mm -hmm. just it, empathizing that yes this is a loss this is something that is painful that you really dreamed of and now your baby has a cleft palate and can't get milk at the breast by themselves let's see if maybe the baby can go to the breast for comfort or if we can use a little tube to mm -hmm. give them some extra milk at the breast or if there's not enough milk production. So often we can do a combination of feeding mm -hmm. at the breast with some special tool and mm -hmm. feeding away from the breast. Mm -hmm. um, we can use donor milk or formula mm -hmm. and feed it close to mom's body or mm -hmm. with mom's mm -hmm. body. So working out something that feels good to each individual family mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. that they get cuddle time with their baby. If the baby's not mm -hmm. capable of breastfeeding, maybe spending some time skin to skin every day. Feeding, mm -hmm. if baby needs to feed from a bottle, bottle feeding with the baby's cheek on the breast mm -hmm. and the baby cuddle to, to the parent's body. Sometimes that is a nice mm -hmm. option for families. Mm -hmm. So understanding, mm -hmm. not putting my feelings on the family, but understanding how the family's feeling and affirming that, mm -hmm. walking through mm -hmm. that tough morning with the family, and then mm -hmm. coming up with some ways to keep that attachment, that cuddling, to make feeding mm -hmm. as nice as is possible for that baby mm -hmm. and that wow. family. Mm -hmm. You are so much more than an, you're a lactation consultant, but really I'm not thinking, wow, you are a, a family consultant. <laughs> there, is, by working. Mm -hmm. there is a lot of psychosocial work that mm -hmm. goes into being a lactation consultant. And that's now being mm -hmm. recognized by our board and people have to have mm -hmm. a certain amount of training. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that now also makes me think, St because it's a psychological stress and anxiety can be one of the biggest barriers towards also successful breastfeeding, right? Why is that, Kathy? There's if some, mom is very stressed or anxious, yeah, there's some research that shows that um, milk ejection, pushing the milk down to the baby, may take a little longer if the mother is very stressed. It mm -hmm. doesn't stop you from making milk but it may take a little longer for the baby to get milk when they go to the breast. But the biggest barrier again with anxiety is it makes mom have a hard time reading the baby's cues and giving the baby what they need. The more anxious a mom gets, the less sensitive she's able to be to the baby. And mm. if you don't feed the baby when they're hungry, your milk supply starts to decrease. Wow. And um, mm -hmm. if you think mm -hmm. you're not making enough milk mm -hmm. just because of anxiety, mm -hmm. then you start mm -hmm. to give the baby too much, too much mm -hmm. other food, too, too much formula, too many bottles. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. the, the breastfeeding falls away without you mm -hmm. meaning it to or wanting it to. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anxiety is something we really mm -hmm. need to work with. I love that you said the less, the more anxious mom is, the less sensitive she is towards the body, because that's what I know for myself. And I'm sure many listeners can relate to if we are super anxious or worried, it's, we are not really, I'm not really in touch with my physical self and right. I'm somewhere floating in my mind. And in these moments, I mean, I couldn't, I even struggle to relate to a neighbor or to listen to my sister or whatever. So that makes, but I think that's beautifully put. She isn't being able to, what did you say, <laughs> sensitive towards a child. So yes. if she doesn't feel her own body, how can she yeah, feel the baby's body? Yeah, yeah exactly. So a lot of things mm -hmm. that we do are mm -hmm. to give mm -hmm. the parent 
confidence and strategies to deal with that that anxiety Mm -hmm. Mm because it's a normal thing when we give birth Mm -hmm. many people become anxious many people become Mm -hmm. depressed some become Mm -hmm. both and Mm -hmm. just having Mm -hmm. support from someone who really knows that breastfeeding is robust and it Mm -hmm. it almost Mm -hmm. always works i mean just like Mm -hmm. hearts don't always work breasts Mm -hmm. don't always work and that's mm-hmm. sad and we mm-hmm. need, you know, we need better support mm-hmm. medically mm-hmm. for when, when those body parts don't work, mm-hmm. but being able mm-hmm. to be an emotional support and give some mm-hmm. strategies that parents can use mm-hmm. to, mm-hmm. to help to reduce some mm-hmm. of that anxiety. Mm-hmm. I, wow. I think that that just, that's yeah. a big thing. Yeah. That just really touched me. I thought, wow. Yeah, actually your work as a lactation consultant, you really support and have supported so many women to, to trust, to trust their body, their nature, knowing that I've got this, it's in me, I've got this. And this makes me wonder, or I think, wow, I would love, I'm sure how, if let's say a young woman, she is pregnant, she is awaiting a baby and I, I think that's also that's partly why I do the podcast. I sometimes see in our society we are actually yeah very disconnected from our body or our femininity, our body parts like breasts. We rarely explore, touch ourselves, mm-hmm. feel, tune ourselves. What can a woman do before the baby is there to, in a lightful way, <laughs> yeah, other than just reading books? How can I get in touch with my breastfeeding nature, with my breast, with with all the things what yeah um well H A league and similar mother to mother support groups are wonderful places to go during mm. pregnancy and p- women and uh, people period well H A league is um you know if you're trans or you're gay you're welcome at well H A league meetings mm-hmm. um so anyone who is having a baby or anticipating breastfeeding mm-hmm. or chest feeding a baby mm-hmm. is welcome at well HA league mm-hmm. meetings and you can see other people handling their babies feeding their babies you can get lots of real world information mm-hmm. and just understanding what's going to happen like there are some very predictable challenges and knowing about them in advance is priceless like the second night feeding frenzy when babies are first mm-hmm. born, they'll nurse and then they'll sleep for a few hours mm-hmm. to recover from the work of of, fee- of getting born and mm-hmm. latching onto the breast and learning how to nurse. And the, the second night, the baby's really thirsty because they were drinking a lot of amniotic fluid. And now they're getting mm-hmm. that first milk, which is thick like honey and sticky. Mm-hmm. It's so baby can learn to swallow, close their airway, swallow, open their airway, breathe. So it's like training wheels for learning to coordinate (laughs) swallowing and breathing. Mm -hmm. But the baby gets thirsty by day two because they're not getting as much. Mm -hmm. So they eat like crazy, usually that second night after their birth. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. many moms think, oh, no, I don't have any milk. This baby will not stop Mm -hmm. looking for food understanding this is a normal thing and usually by the next Mm -hmm. day there's much more milk and the baby settles Mm -hmm. down first baby may do it for two days the second night and Mm -hmm. the third night but Mm -hmm. then things settle down Mm -hmm. when the milk increases Mm -hmm. a lot and then understanding that Mm -hmm. you know by six weeks it's a lot easier than two weeks (laughs) and two weeks is a lot easier than Mm -hmm. two to three days Mm -hmm. and that you know, this is just mm-hmm. the normal trajectory that that mm-hmm. can be so reassuring. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that I can I can imagine to really, in a way, also to dare to just get in touch with the topic and to know as much as possible again in a light way, almost also a bit demystifying, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so that once we breastfeed, it's we know a little bit what to expect. And I'm sure, yeah, I, I sometimes use allegedly resources to find out stuff. It's amazing. And um, it's such a great resource. And it's nice. I, I could imagine to go to meetings, to actually talk, to hear from other people. And you've partly now touched up on that. We have to talk, Kathy, about the, the wonder milk because the breast milk, it's so much more than milk. I mean, we could talk about that <laughs> for, for hours and hours. 
I'd love to hear everything about it. Um, there are so many things to the breast milk, which people don't know. And when yes. I've learned about it, yes, it yes. blew my mind. Yes. Tell us what makes it literally wonder milk. I, I have two particular favorites. <laughs> Go One on. is the way that fat, um, the milk fat is, it's covered in a double membrane, the milk fat globule membrane, and it has digestive enzymes in it. Mm. When the part of our intestines that should absorb fats is the first part, the duodenum, mm -hmm. and the human milk has a special enzyme that turns on when the milk gets to the duodenum and digests the fat for the baby. Babies aren't good at making their own fat digesting enzymes. Mm -hmm. and that's why when babies don't breastfeed, they, they need to get formula. They can't just get straight cow's milk because the fats in cow's milk are very different fats. Mm -hmm. Cows have different kinds of stomachs. They have four stomachs. Mm -hmm. And human babies only have one. And our digestive system works differently. And so that fat milk fat needs to be taken out and replaced with vegetable fats in formula. But even then, they're not as well absorbed. Mm -hmm. If moms can only make a little bit of milk, if they put a teaspoon of their milk in their baby's formula bottle, that helps the baby digest the fats. Wow. So that's one thing I like so much. And then they think mm -hmm. there's some things that that membrane around the fat does to help the baby's immune system. Wow. Okay. The second thing uh, yeah. that I really love about human milk is that there's a two-way communication between baby saliva and mom's breast that feeds baby the exact antibodies they need to things that they were exposed to. So say baby's in daycare. You go to work, baby's getting a germ from daycare. Baby saliva tells your breast, hey, I've been exposed to this germ. And the next day you're giving the baby antibodies against that germ so they don't get as sick or they may not get sick at all. They may just be like want to nurse really often for a day or two till they feel better. Wow. Wow. So in the moment, because that's so important because sometimes you hear from parents or someone can be afraid I shouldn't breastfeed my baby because I had a cold or I was with people with a cold, but actually even more a reason to breastfeed them. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. if, if you're sick, you've already been giving the baby antibodies to that illness before you even had mm -hmm. symptoms. Wow. And also I'm now thinking how, is that right? The breast milk is literally every, almost every portion, every, how to say, every feed, the milk difference from day to the time of the feed to yes. the age of the child. Can you share a little bit about that? That's yeah, also so fascinating. There's day and night differences in the milk. Mm -hmm. So it babies slowly learn how to sleep a little longer at night, but it's normal for human babies to get up. They they may get up to 40% of their calories between midnight and 5 a.m. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And that can be really difficult in a society mm -hmm. where you're expected to do everything you've always done before having a mm -hmm. baby and not getting as much sleep. So over time, we think that the different composition of the milk during the day and at night starts to help the baby's brain mature so the baby can sleep more. Um, wow. Breastfeeding moms have shorter interruptions in their mm -hmm. sleep at night. They may get up a little more often, but they mm -hmm. need to get up for a shorter period of time because nursing mm -hmm. is very quick and easy. You don't mm -hmm. have to heat anything or go to the mm -hmm. kitchen. You can just cuddle your baby and lay down and, and feed. want to lay down on a safe surface, so like mm -hmm. a safe, firm mattress, not mm -hmm. a couch or a recliner. Those are not mm -hmm. safe surfaces. Wow. Yeah, and then obviously that now makes you think, yeah, and then 
if mom sleeps, if she breastfeeds and she has better sleep, that gives her more energy, gives her then more potential to be sensitive to the child. And yes. then we are back with that mom baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diet, how yeah. it's obviously, yeah, it's yeah. a relationship. It is. And it's still a challenge. Mm -hmm. I don't want to minimize mm -hmm. how no. difficult sleep mm -hmm. deprivation is mm -hmm. during early mm -hmm. parenting. It mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. But the body does mm -hmm. numerous things to help us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When the baby sleeps near the mom, mm -hmm. either, you know, in a bassinet mm -hmm. right next to the bed or a co mm -hmm. bedside co-sleeper, or if the family has chosen safe mm -hmm. co-sleeping in the same bed, the baby and the mom's sleep schedules mm -hmm. synchronize so that mm -hmm. the baby's less likely to wake you up out of a very deep sleep where you feel mm -hmm. disoriented and mm -hmm. awful. Mm-hmm. Wow. And yeah, so you've been 1992, you started working as a lactation consultant. And right at the beginning, you said at the moment you, you write a lot or you kind of back off a little bit from clinical practice. What are your projects at the moment? Or what is, what is it? What I always like to ask, what, what makes you feel alive at the moment? And <laughs> Kathy, what mm -hmm. <laughs> makes you excited to get up to in the morning? What, well. Uh, Right now I'm working on a, a class, an advanced practice class for lactation consultants and mm -hmm. other professionals who work with breastfeeding babies on understanding the sounds babies make when they swallow and breathe. Um, we use mm -hmm. a stethoscope in, under the baby's chin or at the mm -hmm. side of the baby's neck. And uh, we can get a lot of information about how well they're feeding, how well they're swallowing from that. So I'm working on a, on a multi-session course on that, that uh, wow. Barbara Robertson of lactolearning.com is going to be hosting that for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's And me. that will then hopefully, that's your current project. Yeah. Yeah. That's my current project. Plus I'm, you know, mm -hmm. traveling around and lecturing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No plans to come to the UK soon. I would like to. <laughs> you but, should, it would be, I could, yeah. Um, organize a lecture for I'm I'm working at the I'm pediatric osteopath. Yeah. Um, and obviously we see so many. I mean, you have a beautiful chapter in your book about cranial osteopathy and yep, yep. how it how it can help if there are breastfeeding difficulties. Or actually, I also have to say very often then to treat mom <laughs> does yes. an equal big contribution. That brings us back to what we said. What is our role as a society? It's to yeah, yeah. equally support mom to help her to come to a neutral and restful yeah, state. Yeah, yeah. Some breast pain is musculoskeletal mm -hmm. in, in yes. origin, yeah. um, you know, and the mm -hmm. increased weight of the breast, that increases mm -hmm. the risk that you're going to have some of that cartilage pain. Mm -hmm. And just the, mm -hmm. holding the baby, especially non-ergonomic mm -hmm. positions. So mm -hmm. helping with ergonomic mm -hmm. positioning is something lactation consultants mm -hmm. do, and osteopaths can certainly help with body strains. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's so much that uh, yeah. that that hands-on can be, you know, really can important so for. Potent. And I would I would absolutely love to come back. It's been years since I've been in the UK. You should. <laughs> I'll be your first one to book a ticket <laughs> and spread the word. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, talking about that also, I think almost wraps it nicely down to. In the end, where it all starts is the, isn't it that we spread the awareness about the importance? If mom goes to La Leche League before she gives birth and she learns about what are all the benefits, and then simply we just can't compare it to the bottle. We just, it's not to judge it. We just can't compare it. It's right. just a fact. Right. And the same for us osteopaths, for any, it's if I have greater knowledge or awareness of what are all the, touching benefits that I'm more likely to invest even more to support that mom baby diet to make it work. Absolutely. Absolutely. Biology is the most amazing science. Mm -hmm. Kathy, if there is, well, maybe there were many of those things, but if there is one thing which you, from what we now talked or also just generally about the breastfeeding, if there is one thing you would like, all the listeners to take with them, what would that be? That breastfeeding is much more than just the product of human milk. It's a whole process 
that develops the baby's lungs, the baby's facial muscles, the baby's jawbone for room for the teeth, the baby's airway. There's so much more to it than just getting that milk into the baby. So understanding that breastfeeding as a process is valuable. And even if you make little or no milk, having baby at the breast is Mm. still a really important way to support that baby's development. It's not all about the milk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I will carry that message into the world. I think that's a wonderful place to stop. Thank you so Thank much you for having so me. Thank you so much, Kathy. It was an honor to talk to you. You're the first guest from New York City, <laughs> which is exciting as well. Yeah, I'm deeply touched and re-inspired myself. To it was my great pleasure messages. to be here. Thank you again for asking me. It was and so I'll see you in the UK. <laughs> yes. Oh, I hope so. I, I yeah. would be very excited. That would be wonderful. Thank you so much. My great pleasure. Stay there. I'm just going to stop the